Hey, today will be a quick one. I have a color grading tip for you if you use the Fujifilm X-H2S together with DaVinci Resolve. I recently did a trip to Stockholm with Epidemic Sound where I captured a lot of footage and I recently edited and color graded the video from that. And there I tried out the color managed workflow from DaVinci Resolve on the X-H2S footage, which should not work actually because there is no F-Log2 profile available right now. But I used a little trick there and that made the footage look really good directly after applying the input color space preset. So let me show you what I did there. So here you see the project, just F-Log2 footage straight out of camera, nothing special, doesn't look good at all. So let me show you the first step. And that is that you go to project settings and there you have the option color management where you turn on DaVinci YRGB color managed. That's the color managed workflow in DaVinci Resolve. You turn that automatic color management off. And there under color processing mode, you go to HDR DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. And under output color space, you choose Rec 709A if you're on Apple devices and Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 if you're on Windows devices. I'm on Apple devices here, so I choose A and then I click save. And then if you're on Apple devices, what you also want to do is to go to preferences, general, and turn use Mac display color profiles for viewers on. And you can also automatically tag Rec. 709 scene clips as Rec. 709A on, so all of your clips will automatically be conformed to Apple devices then, then it's all correct. After that, you click save. And then here's the trick. You only have to do that. You mark all the footage here in your media page. You do a right click and then input color space. As you can see, there's only Fujifilm F-Log. There's no F-Log 2 available right now. So what I did, I just chose Arilog C3 because we all love Arri colors. And now as you can see, that instantly looks really good. Let me show you that on the color page so that you can see that I did not do any color grades here before. Nothing in timeline, nothing in clip. Automatically looks really, really good. And that's for most clips here. A few clips, of course, where the white balance was not correct, like that one, one here that doesn't really look good. That would need a little bit of work. Also here, white balance inside the airport was a bit off. So there I would have to make some corrections, probably also add a little bit of contrast there. But outside, for example, after I set the right exposure, you see it instantly looks really, really good. That's what I mean here. You can use those clips directly. You don't really have to do any color grading. It's better than most of the footage that you see on YouTube if you want to keep it very minimal, you don't want to do any color grading at all. But of course, if you want to do it a little bit better, you could go in there and apply a little bit more contrast. You see it slightly pops a little bit more just by applying 10% more contrast. And on some clips, you would probably also do some exposure adjustments because that's easy to get wrong if you shoot run and gun and then it automatically looks really good. So you can actually just rush through all of those clips, quickly apply contrast and a little bit of exposure adjustment and it's done at least if you nailed the white balance before. And a nice feature of the color managed workflow in DaVinci Resolve is also that if you bring the exposure down too much, you can see here that it never actually gets below zero. Here you can see that a little bit better. And that means that you always get really good looking shadows and a smooth fall off into the shadows, what I always find very important because that looks more cinematic. So it is very easy to color grade your footage if you have the color managed workflow activated in DaVinci Resolve. What you should remember though is that many plugins like especially Film Convert etc don't really work anymore when you use the color managed workflow. So that's a little bit of a bummer there but I think the advantages of the color managed workflow can make a lot of sense to use that as well and it's already built in DaVinci Resolve even the free version so it comes for free actually. And let me give you one more little bonus tip here. What I oftentimes do is that I go into the timeline here, I add a node and then I add the glow effect to that node and I bring the shine threshold completely to the left. Now it looks bad, but then I add composite type to soft light and I bring the opacity slider a little bit down, usually somewhere around 1.8 to 2 and then you get a little bit softer image, which looks really nice and gives it this nice glow. So your subject always pops a bit more, like literally always makes it look better. What you can also do if you want to, to make it quickly a bit nicer is to apply a vignette. I usually bring the size completely up and all the sliders so the vignette is not too strong. 
as you can see, it also makes the image a bit better. It really emphasizes the middle of the frame. Of course, only do that if your subject is in the middle, otherwise it wouldn't really look good. And by setting it to timeline here, not clip, that gets applied to all clips automatically in your timeline. Like you see here, for example, it's the same here, the vignette and the glow effect is automatically applied to all other clips here. So that's a super quick workflow to color grade. And as you can see here, for example, at the meetup, obviously we have a nice light there already. The footage directly looks super nice. I, I wouldn't really have to color grade it anymore. Of course, in the final video, I did a little bit more with the hue and saturation curves, etc., to give it my final look. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You can just get away with that. It looks so good already and that just after a very quick color grade. Of course, what's also important always if you shoot, you ha have to nail your white balance that always makes it a lot faster in post. And if the light in front of your camera is already really nice like it is in those scenes here, then it also helps a lot because the footage can only look good then. So also think about these things. The more you nail in your camera, the less you have to do in post and that saves you a lot of time overall because just changing some settings in your camera is usually a lot faster than fixing it in post. So start doing that. So just a quick tip today. I hope it was helpful. And if you want to see the final video with my complete color grade, just check it out here in the corner. It's the, the Y video for my existing followers. You probably already know this one. And if you find that helpful, please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for upcoming tutorials. See ya.